I'm glad to announce our next panel, how we and you can do better. Please welcome our speakers, uh, Anya Kops, uh, freelance games consultant. Let's applause. Mm -hmm. Gabby Lanilo, QA supervisor at Riot Games. Yeah. Julia Zam Zamboni, sorry, uh, lead, lead producer at Supermassive Games. Ooh. Caitlin Evers, VP Publisher Developer Relations at Pingle Game Studio. And Mafalda Duarte, a studio director, producer at Telescope Games. Woo! Thank you all so much for coming out to the I guess unofficial women in games panel. Yeah, unofficial, yeah. Yeah. Um, first of all, <laughs> here's part of the problem. <laughs> uh, not you all, you all are great. I'm saying the empty seats are part of the problem, just to be clear. Um, so quickly, I'm going to start down here. I would love your name, your pronoun, and I guess we briefly talked about what we do, but maybe just a little bit more about what you do. Uh, yeah, sure. So my name is Mafalda, she, her. Um, I am a studio director right now at Telescope Games. Uh, it's a studio based in Potsdam, Babelsberg. Um, originally, I'm from here, from Portugal. Um, I'm a Women in Games ambassador coordinator. Uh, I founder, uh, I'm founder. i the founder of Game Dev Lisbon, and community is very important to me. So yeah, and I'm here with these lovely ladies. Amazing. Oh, cool. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Gabby Anilio, she, her pronouns. Um, I'm currently a, a supervisor at Riot Games for QA, specifically. Um, I work on Valorant. Um, I'm also a strike team lead on Rainbow Riders. Um, I co-led like the Pride program this past year and will be also for next year. Um, I originally from the Philippines, moved to the States. Um, so I'm an immigrant, and uh, that is also one of the many intersectional parts by myself. Um, but yeah, happy to be here. It's my first time in uh, DevGam, and also just like in Portugal in general. So yeah. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Well, um, hi, I'm Julian Zamboni. I'm from Italy originally. So um, I'm lead producer at Supermassive Games. Um, so I now live in the UK, in Guildford. Um, I've been a producer since like 11, almost 11 years now. Uh, I'm also a Women in Games ambassador. So I'm really happy to be here and this is also my first time in Portugal incredibly like so I'm so happy that we do have like you know a game event that could bring people also there um, that's it cool thank you for having me hi everyone uh, my name is Kathleen Evers um, I live in France but uh, I'm not French, so I'm an immigrant too. <laughs> I'm originally from Belgium and uh, moved to France 30 years ago. So, uh, and I am VP at Pingle Game Studio, which is a uh, Ukrainian-based company. Uh, and my job is basically uh, to get all those lovely developers feeded with lovely projects that they can work on. Uh, can be co-development, art, QA, game design, UI UX, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, thank you for having me on the panel, Anya. Yeah, I didn't put this together, but thanks for being <laughs> here. Uh, I'm Anya Combs, uh, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I do a lot of stuff in games, we can talk about that later. Uh, so I just had two quick notes before we jump into the questions. First is, I just wanna make a quick note about intersectionality. Um, I'm, I have a lot of conflicted, conflicted feelings about uh, women in games panels because I think it, uh, unfortunately does not represent uh, marginalized groups properly. Um, trans women are women, um, non-binary folks are legit. Uh, I wanna make sure that our conversation is mindful about intersectionality of all 
uh, marginalized identities as much as we possibly can. So I don't want uh, five cisgendered women up here to necessarily represent what intersectionality is. Intersectionality is all people that work in games. So just wanted to set the tone. <laughs> And with that being said, um, I think we are going to have a very intense discussion. So if at any point you're feeling uh, like it's too much, it's too overwhelming, that's valid. Please don't be, we will not be offended if you need to get up and leave the room for your own mental health and safety. Please feel free to do so. That's totally cool. Everybody here, take care of yourself. It's all good. <laughs> Is it too like American hippie? <laughs> I think it's important to set the tone, but anyway. Um, so I want to start this discussion about diversity in the industry, right? This is a big topic of conversation, uh, not just for women, but BIPOC folk and all gender spectrums. Uh, I think the PC <laughs> Games article that made the rounds on Twitter is a good representation of that, that uh, Here's, here's 30 years of games history of men, yep. and no one else. <laughs> so anybody can take this first question, which is, what is the advantage of having diversity in the industry? OK, I can go if you like. What, what is the advantage? I mean, it's not only in the games industry. You think it's in, the, in, the, in every single industry. Ours is particularly uh, male focused. <laughs> uh, a very funny story. This morning, I, I bumped into. I was introduced by by Alex to this lovely lady, and she was. It was her first game event uh, conference, and she is not at all from the game event from the games industry. And she asked me, "Why are there so many men here?" <laughs> she was so sweet. <laughs> so. There you go. Uh, so we need diversity. Not only I think. Um, to have like a good balance in in the company in the industry uh, uh, as a whole, but also to I think uh, make make it more richer and uh, and learn from each other about learn from the diversity what brings what brings it to us, not only male female but also religion also also um, uh, color of skin and and, and everything so uh, so yeah my 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 main word would be learn from each other and support each other. Like I have an opinion. <laughs> that, <laughs> I just nope. say like Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I, I think it's um I will agree with everything that you're going to say. I just want to say that diversity is just good business. Uh there is um the, the game industry is ever growing, but that, like there's a ceiling eventually, and there's a ceiling because you still keep catering to the same people over and over again. If you make games for the same type of gamers, then you know why are they going to play yours versus the other? If you start to figuring out new people that were underserved, uh, that were looking for queer stories, they want please someone give me Gossip Girl, but game, and good. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting. Um, and <laughs> uh, you know, and, this, and, and we are good spenders. Um, so, yeah, have you seen all the makeup? <laughs> it's, it's expensive. I think what I'm hearing is, um, yes, it's good business, but also it's good business to make sure that the creativity is continued because you don't want to be stale and stagnant. Um, okay, we're gonna move on to an advocacy question. Uh, Gabby, I'm gonna throw this one to you. All right, what is advocacy and how have you been impacted by it? Hmm. Um, well, I think advocacy is really just, you know, bringing somebody up along with you. Um, for me at least, like how I've seen advocacy is if I'm like in a room and it's all men and everybody's just talking over each other and somebody's noticed like Gabby hasn't gotten to speak up because everybody's just talking very loudly. It's like, hey, what 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 do you have to say about that? Um, or, you know, just like giving us a seat at the table pretty much I would say is a, a big part of like advocacy and what that is to me. Juliana? Gotcha. Well, that's an interesting question I think. Um, I would say, I mean, I also consider some sort of advocacy things like, so for me, like in my personal experience, I mean, uh, I had the chance, you know, to um, go to, um, to talk basically with uh, high school students, 
you know, uh, in my in my city, so in Italy, uh, I've set up some sort of um, course, you know, with um, into um, um, something that is basically made for like last year, the students of the last year of high school uh, to kind of prepare them for, you know, their like new life. Uh, so job and stuff like that. And uh, in Italy, we we basically uh, lack a lot uh, the gaming culture. So and so for me, it was like uh, a kind of win win because I have the I have the chance to talk to people to everyone about video games, video games industry, so the chances to, uh, you know, find a job in the video game industry, but more than that, to talk with girls and say, hey, here we are, I mean, you can, you know, be like a programmer if you want or, or something like that, not only with girls, of course, but, you know, it's like step by step, basically with everyone, and it was like really, really... Um, it was kind of emotional some, somehow, and uh, I feel like this has been some sort, you know, of advocacy make um, in, in a weird way, maybe, but is also trying to make people aware of the things that they can do and, they, and that can be done, you know? So that's my point of view in that sense. I love that. I love that we're defining advocacy too as being able to champion people who look like you because you weren't championed for, right? Like there's of, something yeah. really cool yeah. about that. Yeah. But kind of in that same vein, um, I want to learn about a time that you wish someone would, had advocated for you. Um, and what do you think that should have looked like? Huh. Well, so... <laughs> Well, um, so that's another, like, it's a tough question, probably. Um, now that I've said what I said, <laughs> I would say <laughs> that probably um, if I would, ha would have the chance to, you know, to talk with someone when I was at high school, it would, it would have made a great, great difference, you know? Uh, so that's why I'm trying to do this right now. Um, but probably... I mean, you know, at all these kind of, you know, video game conferences, also like my first video game conferences back in like 2013, I think, um, it was definitely like, I think, 95% male. <laughs> and uh, there was this kind of a habit of um, a tendency um, from from like from male people from like um, male professionals to kind of ignore me even if because I was there with like a male colleague of me so we were you know into to presenting some stuff etc so we had like business meetings and there was this thing about you know being kind of uh, yeah, ignored mm -hmm. during during a meeting, during you know um, chat at the bar or whatever. Um, so probably what I would have liked to uh, it was like to meet someone like another woman, another woman for example, or someone else, just breaking the ice a little bit, just taking as you said, kind of you know taking like the the conversation a little bit more on my side. Mm -hmm. That said, I think that is also a matter of you know um, how you are basically your, your character. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty strong person in that sense. So I'm, I'm not the one who just stays in the corner. I'm like, hey, hi, so here I am, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. But nobody's like, is like, like this. So mm -hmm. that's what I also could consider like some sort of form of advocacy. So helping mm -hmm. others in that sense, just involve other people if they if you see other people that are a little bit, you know, shy, more shy, etc. So yeah, I, I think also what you're touching on is don't just assume that because somebody looks different than the rest of your team that they're not on the team. Like that actually is very simple but goes a long way. Um, the number of times that I was working a booth at Kickstarter and I would have somebody out of pocket come up and be like, oh, I didn't realize that Kickstarter had booth babes. Yeah, yeah. And no, I was yeah. like, I'm actually the director here. Exactly. But thank you so much. Exactly. No, the yeah. saying, like, yeah. during was, business meeting, having, you know, yeah. to answer questions that that person is yeah. definitely directing to the other male colleague. And mm -hmm. I was like, 
the one who is going to respond because that's my job. I mean, I'm the producer here, so what you're asking is something that I know. Yeah. And so, like, after, you know, the fifth, sixth question, they started to just, you know, <laughs> direct, <laughs> directing their eyes into mine. And I was like, hey, hi, <laughs> you know, here I am. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I understand that. Um, so, Kathleen, I'm going to ask you this. Um, so we know this is an issue. We know that we, as a, any marginalized person, is going to be asked to take notes in a meeting. We know that we are not going to be looked at. We know that we have to fight a little bit harder. We know that the, the things are just stacked against us a little bit more. Why do you think that is? Because I think that we, at that very specific moment, we are not um, what they were, what, what, I mean, what they expected us to be or we're not expecting having a woman sit, sat in that specific spot on that moment with that respons responsibilities, actually. Um, I think that also is, it's often a matter of power. Um, women of power uh, are very, very much, they scare people away. Uh, uh, it's true, right? Uh, and, and, and that is one of the biggest problems, I think. Um, how many women CEO do we have in our industry, yeah. for example? Um, how many um, VPs of BizDev do we have in our industry? Mm -hmm. not, not that much, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the roles are always you know, a bit like the same, uh, marketing girls or booth days, as you say. Oh. <laughs> that, that, has gone, that, is, that has gone away since, yeah. since a couple yeah. of years now, luckily. But uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, a lead producer like Julia, I mean, that's that's kind of that's kind of rare, and 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 maybe that is why it scares men off or or other people off, and I think it's yeah one of the one of the main issues. Yeah, Rep lack of representation. So it's just sort of yeah. a kind of built into the system. Yes. Uh, Gabby or Mafalda, do you have any thoughts on why? Um, well, I think like as like marginalized people, I mean, we've gone through struggle and so they're just like oh like we could just throw it at the people who already know struggle because they're gonna get through it and we're crafty like that right i feel yeah, like we're it's so been, tough. we are very tough uh i feel like i've always just been on survival mode i mean ever since like that's kind of what's been instilled in like my family like moving to a new country and all of that um just like being a woman like my mom being like a single mom and stuff so it's like i just have that innately of like there's no other choice for me to work and work to get to even like half of where, you know, somebody might get like that role because like they just happen to be like a straight white guy or something. And so I feel like it's just in our nature almost, which is kind of sad, but you know, we're like expected to be hired into like these companies as like the, the catch all of like ticking all the boxes cause you're all of these different identities and they're like, fix it. Um, so I feel like that's just like what ex was expected of us. Do you have anything? It's okay if you don't. <laughs> okay, cool. No worries. No, it's all good. I just want to make sure we give everybody a chance to chat. Um, I think something that's really interesting that you said is putting that onus on us to fix it. Have you experienced uh, any sort of backlash for not fixing it? Has anyone on the panel ever experienced that before? Well, I, I think in, uh, for those of us that have been doing advocacy uh, things, and I think everyone <laughs> here, um, sometimes it's very scary to put ourselves uh, forward in those types of roles because people are like, again, for example, um, it's like, oh, aren't you coordinating all the Women Games Ambassadors? Like, you should have, I don't know, supported this cause and that cause or spoken up more or, I don't know, be more online or, like, I, <laughs> I can't. Uh, and then, like, just... To, and uh, all the weight to this one person, or like again, like how you're saying, like oh, don't you represent all the your people? Like uh, aren't you all the Portuguese? <laughs> it's, uh, the amount of times that I was introduced at an event, and it was like, oh, this is Mafalda. She represents all the women in Portuguese game industry. And I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't. Uh, newsflash: It's not that small of a country, um, <laughs> and I am just this one person. Um, yeah, and I and I think um, that sometimes can even constrain you because it's like, okay, you're not doing the right job for everyone. Yeah, you're never going to be doing enough or the exact right thing. And then for some people you're not, I don't know, 
uh, rebel enough um, and you're not pushing back enough and for others you're like too far um, and 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 also um, my quick point on that is also on, on the intersectionality mm -hmm. of, of this all is is w when it comes to different um, thoughts process of, of what it means to be inclusive as well, depending. Because for example, I sometimes don't relate a lot <laughs> because you were asking, oh, am I too EP American? Yeah, well, <laughs> sometimes that would be, you know, um, a different perspective, like culturally in, yeah. in different uh, countries. Uh, again, just using that woman in games experience, um, something as simple as pronouns. A lot of our ambassadors from uh, Asia, they don't even get that question. Or mm -hmm. they, they, they almost never, there's no, never a reply there. Probably they will say like, miss, missus, whatever it is, uh, and not understand um, what does that mean. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we need, and you should never say, oh, you're not in the cause enough. Of course, of course they are. Of course they want to yeah. be a part of it. You know? I think that's a really good point. And I think, you, I think um, something that I'm sort of taking from this conversation is it feels like sometimes we're sort of set up to fail no matter what, mm -hmm. right? Like the system isn't built for us. The system is not kind to us. The system will tell us why we're wrong. And the system expects us to be perfect. And when you're not perfect, there's a punishment that happens. And sometimes that punishment is a little bit harder than some of our like more non-marginalized coworkers. What keeps you going? Why do you stay? Why are you? <laughs> you know, I mean, I think for you, Kathleen, like you've you've been doing this for twenty something years. Five years. She's been in the industry five Come years. On. <laughs> <laughs> like what yes. what how do you every day I I feel it sometimes where I wake up and I'm like I just don't have it in me today uh, but like what keeps you going what keeps me going is 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 the industry itself actually to be honest and uh, the, the beauty of it the the the, how, the way how it continues to uh, evolve uh, throughout the years and throughout the games and and the ga also the games that you play of course what keeps me going every single day is that I learn every day something mm -hmm. from my coworkers, from my industry, from myself also. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still not done, by the way. Might be 20 years, not done. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope so, no, 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 really. I mean, um, it's also um, me being, uh, traveling all the world for, uh, you know, for business and stuff. It's, uh, it's uh, you have to like it. Because if you don't like your job, um, well then, I mean, why? <laughs> I think I just, I just love it. Uh, I think some, um, some of the, I have made really, really good friends mm -hmm. uh, outside the, the, the working situations, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and those, I, yeah, I mean, it's like a little family. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and having been there for so long, Right, Mafalda? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it feels like, yeah, it feels like home. Um, a home that sometimes needs to be cleaned, that sometimes <laughs> needs to be, you know, uh, entertained and, 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 and whatever comes with that, uh, you know, expression of, of, of home and family-ish um, feeling that I have. That's my feeling. Maybe um, I've often been told that I I'm too gentle or too soft or too kind to do this job. Uh, <laughs> it's true, really. That is that I have I've heard that so many times. But um, I mean, I'm a giver, so whenever I give, I get back, mm -hmm. and, and and you can feel that. Uh, and and there's always good vibes. Okay, there's also cons, of course. You know, there's, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is I can I can talk about the industry for ages, and I can only do it with with you guys here uh, and and when I'm traveling, because it's it's such a peculiar situation that we are in mm -hmm. that it's hard to talk with uh, you know from people from the outside, especially where I live. I live like really on a small little countryside little village uh, with trees, <laughs> and that's it. So you talk to the trees? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's just one bakery in my in my little village, so you can imagine uh, m me talking about games. It's not just not, well, but yeah, a bit, a bit complicated situation. <laughs> but um, lucky for me, I have one of my girls is working in the industry as well. So yay, check. <laughs> she so one of her daughters to be. Yeah. 
yeah. explicit yeah yeah well done well done no i think i agree i mean first of all i'm i'm still here because i suppose i like my job i mean <laughs> apparently after 10 years i hope so uh <laughs> so um plus so i'm a, i'm always been like a very ambitious person so when i start something and this is just like me of course so it doesn't mean that needs to be like that for like that for everyone but when i start something i really want to you know move on and go on and learn again and again so just and reach what i think could be like my peak my maximum you know uh plus again i will be repetitive probably but as 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 much as i basically uh, um reasoning on that um i'm thinking that probably a reason why uh, i'm i'm still like keeping on uh is definitely what I've, what I've said. So I every time I, you know, um, I go to an event, for example, or I do like a presentation or whatever, or I also like have a business meeting or whatever, I basically had the chance to meet new people. Mm -hmm. I always kind of hope somehow to meet someone like someone like a new a newcomer to the industry industry, you know, some a new a new profile, a junior person, someone who is just has just like uh, started in that. And somehow I hope to be able to, you know, to, to give uh, uh, some sort of, you know, encourage, yeah, some sort of like encouraging suggestion, encouraging comments, or something like that, you know, to, to make to make them feel more comfortable somehow and say, okay, like just you did it until now, so just keep on, you know, don't don't be afraid about things. So that's probably one of the one of the reasons I would say. I feel like I heard somebody say this in whispers, but spite, <laughs> I feel like is a big reason. It's like, oh, you don't think I belong here? Well, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Um, but aside from that, like, it's just like the community, right? I like do it for the, the girl in the Philippines who's like, oh, like people around me just like play games, but would never include me because I don't look like them. And it's like, well, you can actually run an entire department or company one day. Um, and I totally believe you can do that, you know? It's like for, just, I think just like existing in itself is kind of like your own way of showing you should be there. Um, and that's like a battle in itself to just exist in these spaces. And so I do it just to, to give that kind of like inspiration to people of like, hey, like she's there. Why can't I get there? You know? Yeah. It's an act of rebellion. Yep. <laughs> I love that. Mavalda? Yeah. I I was I was hearing all of your notes and I was thinking, what is my why? I think I why not? I don't I don't know. I never you know, I'm just <laughs> I want it. I liked it. I'm here. <laughs> I got it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that an Ari Ariana Grande song? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Stay tuned yeah. for more Easter eggs. <laughs> so I'm hearing a couple different things and I'm I'm curious if our male counterparts have ever been asked that question, right? And I, I feel like if they were to answer, I think there would be a lot of commonality. And that's really interesting me to explore a little bit, but I think on the vein of like, I don't wanna say spite, because I don't think that is like, I don't think that's an entirely accurate thing, right? Like I think act of rebellion and just like, well, I didn't see me doing this, so I'm gonna be that person, right? Like. Mm -hmm that's advocacy work in itself too, right? Um, but with that being said, I think that uh, we probably have a very different experience as, as women um, who go to a number of events um, than our, our male counterparts do. And I think any, any, anyone of any marginalized identity I think has a very different experience going to events. Um, I don't think it's a secret that gaming events aren't the safest for anyone of, an, of a marginalized identity. I don't think we necessarily need to get into why specifics. I think if you just <laughs> look on twitter.com, you'll see why. Um, but this is a conversation that's come up a lot over this last year after the GDC incident and a number of other incidents that have happened at gaming events. What is one thing that you want to see change at events to make you feel safer? 
I, I don't I don't want to be the the the, um, the counter <laughs> part of this conversation. I'm sorry, but I have to say so. Um, I, it wouldn't be necessarily something that I want to see change at the events. It would be something that I would like everyone to have, uh, which is just a great support system because I always had that. Uh, fortunately, I never felt unsafe in, in a game event um, because I ever I always had people advocating and having my back. Um, and not all, and not everyone uh, has that for sure. And, and in every new event that I went to, I always find someone like, uh, I remember um, I met Kathleen in one of my first international events. It was the first time that I went to Pocket Gamer. And, and then as, as soon as we met, I had like a safe space to go to. Every time that I was tired to go walk around, I didn't know anyone, I would just go to your booth and I would just hang there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and, and in Portugal, in our uh, Game Dev Camp event, it was our little, like, the, the biggest one, still very little, um, uh, Portuguese and international um, speakers, conference type of event. Um, it happened to me one time, there, like, someone had uh, bad intentions after a night out. Um, I told all my friends <laughs> the next day that person was shunned right away. And I think just having those people in the industry uh, that have your, they're all uh, male friends, by the way, like, by, I was, I was assuming that you, you would get that because I was in a uh, game industry uh, <laughs> but, uh, event. So, but they were like, believe me right away, they're like, oh, I, I see what you're saying. That person is out of our friend group. Uh, we would not talk, uh, put, them, put them aside and all of that. And uh, that's what I would like to see more, that there are these um, buddy systems, that the people themselves, they understand that. Because um, I'm very good friends with organizers. Um, at uh, DevCom, for example, and and, um, and uh, Astrid and uh, and Tufi, like they are the the best people ever, and they're so caring ab about that safety. And and I think there is no way to put the weight of what happens at events and the people that are putting them together alone. Like they should. There's strategies. There are codes of conduct, but then there's adult people around <laughs> that should have accountability and accountability needs to go towards them. Um, yeah. So I didn't think that was a counterpoint at all. And I think the two, no, no, no. I think the two things that you touched on that are really important are one, finding a community and two, making sure that that community will also hold people to uh, accountability standards. Yeah, awesome, I love that. Um, Gabby? Um, I guess this is more speaking from like the American kind of like game scene, but like obviously I think like drinking is a big part of it. Um, I know it's like in Europe, it's it's just like part of the culture, but in the States, I don't know what it is they put in there, but it's like acid. Like it's literally like the drinks there, it's almost always like just common now, like, oh, did you get spiked? And that's like pretty bad actually. Um, and so I feel like, like limiting these networking events um, for women to specifically involve like parties and like alcohol instead of like, you know, uh, promoting like coffee drink ups and things like that and maybe like people who are like sober and, and that's I think just more practicing like inclusivity also um, and um, same for just like making events like accessible whether it's like uh, cost wise or just like um, being able to like enter and exit a building and thinking about like people with disabilities and things like that I think that just makes it overall more safe and like inclusive for people to feel uh, a part of it um, but yeah, if you know, if, if women could feel safe in an event where people aren't getting drunk and trying to get on them, that would be amazing. Um, but unfortunately, like, that was like kind of like the GDC experience that a lot of people I know like shared, and um, everyone was like, "Well, that's the game industry," and it's like, "Does it have to be the game industry?" You know, thought we kind of like move a little past that by now. I kind of reject that. I don't believe that that's the game industry. I believe that those are certain individuals in the games industry, right? I think the alcohol one is also challenging because people cannot drink for a handful of reasons, whether it's for addiction reasons, personal preference, and honestly, the one that doesn't get discussed is religion, mm -hmm. right? And that is part of inclusivity is making sure that like people of all backgrounds, whether that's of any, any type, right? I think making that accessible is really important. I want to see more tea-based <laughs> events. I want to drink more tea with people. <laughs> That's like the thing that I wanted to. Um, Juliana? Um, I'm, I'm, also, I'm still reasoning on that, about that. So, uh, But considering what uh, Mafalda and, and, and uh, Gabby just said, probably 
I don't know, something like, as you mentioned this, like, you know, safe bodies kind of thing. So maybe some sort of like um, organized, like safe body group. Like when you arrive at an event, you do have like all your, you know, tickets for the, you know, drain party um, or non alcohol tea party or whatever. And you also do have, you know, like a WhatsApp or like, I don't know, like an Instagram account or something to basically of someone that you could, you know, talk to mm -hmm. during the event or go to during the event if you have any kind of problem regarding, you know, uh, being like non-included or having some sort of, you know, non like unwanted attentions or unwanted comments or whatever at any kind. Like, it maybe. sounds like a, a mentorship program. B uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, or just because you know, sometimes like a lot of people just go to events. Yeah, it's yeah. a friendly face. Yeah, a friendly face. Even because, I, I, yeah, because it could happen that when you when you uh, join when you arrive at an event, you can make friends. You can make you, know, you can meet someone, but it could also happen that you don't have the chance. So basically, after the, the second day, you haven't meet anyone that basically. Uh, with with which you you have make some sort of deep connection, so you feel like a little bit alone. You know, you yeah. maybe are alone, so you don't know who to talk to. If you are kind of, if you feel like you are in danger, or if you feel like I'm comfortable about something, so it could be cool to have someone who is yeah. literally there for that. You know, yeah. I love that. I I think it's a really great idea. I'm just I'm wondering what the expo. I I would love to explore that. I, yeah. I mean, I'm not an event it's just organizer, like, but go ahead, go ahead, those plans. So. Sorry, don't talk again. But uh, yeah. this year at DEF CON, they did that. There was like uh, some people with a pink t-shirt around and they were just like the inclusivity team or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And so you could like run to them in anything that, that you need. And exactly. I would say that that would also that friendly face type of thing that like, I don't know, you're, you're alone, you don't understand Cologne, like you don't know where to go next or what's the path to the far party. They would support you on that. And yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think implementing that at every conference is like, yeah. it's that would be amazing, quite honestly. Even something small. I know like um, uh, Gamescom is like, oh, that's a lot. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, I think on a smaller scale, that totally makes sense. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add something. I, I think it's very important to have that uh, one person that everybody can run to, basically. Uh, but then uh, I asked myself the question, um, how much are we willing to do that or can we do that? Mm -hmm. Th that's also very important yeah, because yeah. I, I'm very much convinced that there's a lot of people in this situation that just don't... Um, 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 yeah, they just want to go and, 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 and talk to that people yeah. because of shyness, because of maybe uh, it's going to leak and, and, yeah, and, yeah. and there will be stories behind it or uh, whatever. I'm, uh, especially when it comes to sexual harassment, for example. Uh, it's a very delicate question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, uh, so, yeah, we, I, don't, I don't think that we are ready yet for it. Uh, but, of course, I think it's a very, very good idea what DEFCOM did also this year. Uh, and I think I'm sure that they will do it yes, next year again. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think it's a good idea, but uh, we need to, uh, we need to, yes, right, yeah. Well, I think also, I think, I think what, what is being touched People on here is behave. there isn't necessarily one right way. And having multiple options so that you can sort of adhere to a large group of people, right? Now we're kind of going back to like, how can we advocate for all types of people to feel safe in an event? And it does, I definitely feel like there's a lot of events, they're changing, but I, I definitely, you know, my first ever GDC, I was like, oh, this is for a very specific type of person, and I have to fit that mold, and that goes against everything that I am as a person, and I think we are shifting a little bit in the industry, and we're not there yet, to your point, but I do think that we are finding different ways to foster that, and I think it's just a continuous exploration. I think part of that is also like a post-COVID world, even though like we're still, we're still in a, we're, it's still here, COVID's still here, everyone. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, but like looking at it from the perspective of like, cool, you know, it, people are changing and shifting and we're finding ways to, to make people feel a little bit more safe is great. And we're gonna continue to explore what that looks of like. Of course, yeah, yeah. And I think it's also, that also depends on uh, the conference itself. Yeah. For example, GDC is not DEFCOM or Gamescom. Uh, GDC, all the meetings, you know how it goes, take place in the lobbies. Uh, we're not necessarily all on the, on the show floor. Um, I don't think that I will even, you know, uh, I, I think I went 
only one afternoon to the show floor this year at GDC, so the rest of the time I was in, in hotel lobbies. Uh, so, so, so yeah, it's, it also depends on the setup of the event is, uh, itself. And, uh, and yeah, continue uh, talking about it and also shouting out what happened uh, at the event, uh, like GDC, like Nordic, like uh, whatever. Uh, I mean, there's so many stories that we can tell, right, Anya? I mean, we're also only talking about the video games industry. Like, I'm pretty deep in the tabletop world, and oh boy, there's a, <laughs> it's a whole separate can of worms of what happens at those events. Um, I have one last question that I want to ask before we open this up for Q and A. Um, I think that we have had a really good discussion here about, you know, what is the issue, what does it look like, why is it happening, and what are some ways that we want things to change. Um, but in speaking about just day-to-day -day life, right? Because as much as, you know, some of us would love to be able to just fly around the world all the time and do these events, that's, there's a reason why we're doing these events and that's to, you know, push our games or get our own name out there, like whatever it is. So when we're in a, you know, day-to-day -day working situation, what is one way that our colleagues can be an ally to us? Wow. <laughs> Are these questions too hard? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Like, I, again, I'm very lucky, guys, so bury me. But um, uh, so both of my, the companies that I work in games, uh, Nerdmonkeys and Telescope, we always had, had um, a culture of uh, openness and vulnerability. And, and, and I can give you like two examples of how the team can support each other. Um, if it is too graphic, I'm sorry, you can leave. But, um, you know, <laughs> the week before your period when you start to cry every time, and if you are a student director that has to deal with a lot of pressure, uh, it happens more often than not, because like, it's like, you have to deal with a bunch of problems, and, uh, and at some point it might be a little bit too much. And I remember uh, we were in like, this leadership meeting, uh, solving something, and I just try, started to cry. Like, it's, not, it's emotional, like, it doesn't go away. It's not because I was sad, it's just like I have hormones. And like and every, everyone's just asked, do you need five minutes? And I was like, no, I'm in the middle of an idea. I have a solution <laughs> for this. <laughs> and, and it is great that your team like supports you through whatever you're going through and 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 in whatever works for you and not in a oh we're not I don't know, you're not our leader anymore, or we don't trust your opinion or your ability to, to do your job is like, oh no, okay, we understand you cannot control that part right now. Um, can you still do whatever we're doing? Should we take five um, and 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 work uh, through whatever you're going through? And then you're thinking, okay, so that's the, your girl problem. Like, how many times is as every single one of us like just dealing with something in your uh, in your personal life? Maybe like I my, my game designer right now, just uh, my programmer right now, just have a little one year old. Um, the other day was like, okay, this week she's sick. <laughs> I haven't slept. <laughs> I cannot think. I just, dude, just stay home. Uh, you know, just don't use the two hours a day and commute and and use that time to sleep the best that you can. Uh, and let's communicate, have the back and forth to support each other. And, and again, it, it doesn't go just one way. Uh, I think that goes back to that point of um, how diversity can support everything else. Like. If you have that culture of collaboration and supportiveness and diversity, it also supports you, <laughs> whoever you are in, in, in the interne intersectionality scale, even if you are um, a white man um, from the US. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and yeah, I think uh, f for sure building, uh, building that type of culture um, Again, I am in the position uh, of leadership where I can build that co that culture and I can uh, be a decision maker uh, there and and make sure that I am not disrespected in those decisions uh, and that everyone feels that um, that that structure is important for them and, and therefore they also support me in everything that I need. I'm hearing uh, like, I think three main points there. One is taking shame out of just being a human yeah, yeah. and acknowledging exactly. that like we have feelings and emotions and as women sometimes there's a thing that happens to our bodies <laughs> that we cannot control. 
and there shouldn't be shame in having that openness and discussion. Um, I think that's really cool. Um, I'm hearing also allowing for work-life balance because life is not linear and being able to adapt is really important and making sure that there's an allyship there too. And then I'm also hearing uh, making sure that you have a diverse team so that you can capture both of those two main points. Yeah. Cool. Um, we have about 15 minutes left, so I do wanna open it up for Q&A unless anyone had like any burning response to that question. <laughs> I was just gonna say put all your leaders to, through like uh, leadership training. And yes. just because they're a manager oh, yes. and have been one for 15 years, like bro, you got to keep up with the times, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think everybody should just undergo leadership training, especially if you're managing people. I think that's a great call out. Um, do we have a mic for Q&A? Yes. Cool. Yes. First of all, thank you for this inspiring panel. Let's make big applause to our speaker. <laughs> and I guess we could start with questions. Please raise your hands. If there's no questions, I have more questions, but that's okay. <laughs> No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I want, I want uh, questions from the audience, that's perfect. Hi girls, thank you so much for organizing this panel and doing this at DevCam, it means a lot because we are uh, also a women leadership team and touching these topics is important to us. But you talked a lot about the events and having a specific person at the event that you go to if something happens, but isn't organizers enough? <laughs> like uh, at the, on the smaller scale, I understand you couldn't find like GDC organizers everywhere, but on a scale, on a smaller scale, how we as organizers can be more visible that we are like ready to respond to, to help you, to be there for you. Maybe we're not saying that enough or how can we improve in that matter? Can I, can I answer? <laughs> even, though, even though I'm the moderator? Uh, so I think there's two things. Uh, one, I don't want to bother you. Yeah. Yeah. To be totally honest. Like, I, like, I, Agreed. I know what happens. No, <laughs> no absolutely. I, so I think, I think what tends to happen is if there's, it depends on the level of the issue. If it's an issue that it's like, okay, this can be managed at the event. This person is... X, Y, Z, they need to be booted. Great, we can handle that. This person was inappropriate, but not in a way that's like, a, an, in a legal way, right? Like, there's a trauma processing that needs to happen in those moments. And so I think in the moment is a, is a valid thing to ask of attendees. I think having something after the event, so that way you can kind of like process is this something I want to talk about? Is this something that I want to like bring to the conference organizer after the event? Because in the middle of it, you're running around, there's so much happening, there's this, there's that, this fell apart, this person canceled. You know, like I, I, do, I don't want to bring more to your plate, right? So like I appreciate the like no bring it to me, but I think having it as an option after, I think to, to me, I think that is um, the best solution because I'm, I'm just not in the moment gonna come to you because I don't wanna bother you. <laughs> Can I say, I, I, do, I do agree with you. Uh, plus, um, so what I, what I was thinking about uh, was literally someone you can for sure go and talk to. But for example, you know, if you have been uncomfortable at like a party on day one and you do have like other parties that you for some reason need to attend because of also, for, of course, networking and business reason, there could be someone you could ask, hey, can we, you know, someone who is at the event but is not like organizing the event because as, as you said, like you will have a lot of, you know, stuff to do and, and to handle, etc. But someone who could literally ask you, can we, can we go together? I don't know, something like that, you know, can we like put a group together and go together at that party so I will feel like more comfortable for some reason. Just like random ideas, but. Sorry, I'm going to support you um, on, um on that, again, goes to the medicism type of thing. Uh, I, rem um, I just remind something that happened uh, at Talk and Play in Berlin. Uh, they have the, um, the Talk and Play ambassadors, uh, which is like, 
people that are in their community for a while and, and the organizers trust, so it's not part of the organizing team. Yeah. Uh, and they are just there to welcome new people, to make them feel comfortable. Like for example, right as an immigrant just got there, there were people that would talk to me right away and just like introduce me to everyone. Um, and that sometimes, especially at events that happened for 15 years, congratulations, uh, that, that would probably be something that you can tap into for things more of that buddy side. So not, not what Anya was saying about like a, an active issue. And yeah, of course, that type of thing needs to go back to you eventually. Um, but those little, you know, just like the day-to-day, -day, oh, what am I going to do next? So the event is coming to an end. I don't even know if there's any dinners. Uh, that type of thing could come from within the community that you, you yourself have built. Yeah. yeah. And, and just quickly, I do want to move on to a next question. Um, I think this, uh, this event is run beautifully. So thank you for all of your hard work. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, any other? I think. Here we go. Yay. Hi, hello, thank you so much for your talk, first and foremost. Um, I have two questions, actually. Um, the first one is, considering that a lot of the segregation is kind of like ingrained in our minds in a sense that it's almost like unconscious, and uh, you guys being leaders, what do you guys do when you see something that's, oh, it's just the status quo, it's just something that it's done? How do you guys intervene, if at all, or if you just push people aside or something? And the second question is, um, what would you say to people who will claim, oh, by doing advocacy, you're kind of segregating everyone else? I thought you wanted to be integrated. Mm -hmm. and yeah, those are my two questions. Who wants to take this one? I can answer the first. Hell uh, yeah, just for the first question, because I'm a people manager, and at least like the approach that I take to management, a lot of it has to do with empathy. I know there's a lot more like managers that are just like, we're only going to talk about work strictly, but I'm like, I want to, you know, like know if something's going on in your life, like you had mentioned, you know, take a mental health day and all of that, like, that's the type of rapport that I want to build with my direct reports as, as far as being a leader. And then um, I bring that up to just like the rest of like the management meetings that I'm in as far as like, hey, this is how I've been um, approaching things with my direct reports. And uh, there's like a lot of collaboration with that. And also like we do like um, a lot of training pretty much yearly as far as like, okay, like um, here's like how you can like grow in like those skills, how you are able to uh, handle like harder conversations and how to approach that. So I think um, I've been pretty lucky to have those. Of course, not everyone, every company is going to fund that or even like implement that into their system. But um, that's just something like you can do on like a personal level and have impact that way. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, I don't, if somebody wants to second question. I think for the second question, I think the thing to keep in mind is that intersectionality is for all. Intersectionality is not about segregating. Um, I think if someone is looking at the word intersectionality as a form of segregation, I think that is a personal discovery that they need to go on. And I think it's worth that person reaching out to marginalized people to have those conversations, to ask why they feel they are being segregated when they look like everyone else around them. Thank you for your questions, I appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, uh, we could take one more. Okay, yeah. yeah, one more. That's awesome. Thank you. Sorry, I just meant her two questions. No. <laughs> okay. Sorry, that was unclear. I apologize. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for talk. Um, I think there is one another very important dimension, our political perception, you know, the political situation. I'm a citizen of Ukraine, and you might understand how traumatized I am. Uh, but it's not only Ukraine. You might know the situation with summit when Seo commented, so it's all around, everywhere. So, and here as well, um, I feel some uncomfortable, uncomfortable situations because of hearing the speech which I would avoid to hear. I, I understand there is a clear policy in the game, uh, Dev Game, and really appreciate it was written very uh, clear what is allowed, what is not, not allowed. Uh, my opinion and my question, so how can we, we cannot be ignorant to politics. We have opinion, it's good to have opinion. How to live with those different opinions in one IT game society? So 
I I really appreciate this question. I mean, I think for Gabby and I, like we're Americans and we had this conversation this morning of when we come to different countries, we feel an incredible amount of shame and embarrassment being Americans. Um, it's, it's a challenging conversation. I think on a scale like this, where we are presenting to you, having a political conversation is inherently challenging because we are currently in positions of power here, right? If we have these conversations in a smaller scale and we all go into those conversations understanding that everyone's intent is good and it's okay to have a different opinion, I think having those small conversations are what uh, enacts change, right? So one of the big things in America that we hear constantly with our politics is about local politics and how local elections are the things that change everything. And that is 100% true. I think one of the cool things about global events is that we're able to hear different perspectives and we're able to have those conversations and ask, why is, why is this happening here? Because this is what's happening in my country and I want to learn why things are happening in your country. Because all, all I can go off of is, a, is the perspective of what we are being fed <laughs> and told. So being able to have those smaller conversations in a like calm and kind and compassionate way of I want to understand in much smaller spaces, I think that is, to me, one of the best ways to have those types of conversations. I don't know if that answers your question, um, but that is, that is my personal perspective. I'm happy to hear other people too. Yeah, I just want to add something to your question. I work for a Ukrainian company. So, uh, and I, I know how traumatized they are. And, and, and myself too, I found myself in, sometimes in a very difficult situation in, uh, in, in a way that it's a very touchy subject. Um, and I feel it every day. I talk with my developers uh, about everything but politics uh, and 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 everybody is like avo not not avoiding the subject but um very much concentrating on work 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 and work uh because they don't want the, the economy right to, they just want the country to you know to to survive simply as that and and and, and business wise i also have uh, questions related to ukraine uh, in, in, in the sense that, um, how about security of the data? How about uh, banking transfers? I mean, come on, there's still banks in Ukraine. <laughs> Don't be stupid. <laughs> so, but uh, but yeah, I I feel your your um, your 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 point and uh, and and can imagine how hard it is. I feel it every day, and I'm very much amazed and proud of my colleagues. Uh, and my studio uh, back there. Thank you for your question. I would also add, I think sometimes when we have these conversations, I think um, sometimes it comes at, with like a release. Like it's like, I just have to talk about this because I'm living this every day and I, I have to just be able to talk about it. But I think one of the things that happens is also a level of consent with the person that you're having or the people that you're having those conversations with. And part of that is we are all consenting to have that conversation. And sometimes it can be a little bit obvious when it's like somebody or who or one person that you're talking to is like, I just, I've reached my emotional capacity to have this conversation. And I have a trick. Um, <laughs> the even playing ground with everybody is pets. <laughs> everybody wants to talk about their pet. Everybody wants to show off their pet. I will, I will show you the video that I got sent this morning of my dog being a little, a dumb little idiot. And she's very cute and very funny. But adding that little bit of brevity, so that way it's a little bit of a reset and a reframe to the conversation, so you can dive back into some of those tough conversations. Finding even playing ground. I mean, the other thing is we're all here because we love video games, right? We can also just start that conversation of video games, and we can reset some of those conversations so that it's easier to have sometimes very, very emotionally charged conversations so that you can continue and, and just remind each other, we're here with good intent, I wanna learn from you, that's really important. Also, my dog's name is Nebula and she's a perfect <laughs> angel baby.
Um, I think that is the end of our questions, but I just want to thank you all so much for coming. This was really great. And thank you to the DevGam team for having us. This is really fantastic. Thank you. And thank you thank for you our two panelists. Thank you. Thank you all.